Can I get your thoughts on this absolute show of a shirt combo? I'm not pleased with this. This does not please me. Leave this at home. <laughs> He's made two saves against a child. Yeah. I think J-Mo's got every right to save both of them penalties. <laughs> And there is a picture of a smiling Steve Sidwell looking like he's just joined a, a kind of rival football podcast. I, I heard various people saying I've lost, I've lost the office, I've lost the dressing room. <laughs> um, if people would have been looking at me from outside my car, they would have, they would have said he's having a massive row with someone on the phone. <laughs> Honestly, I was fuming. <laughs> Hello and welcome to that Peter Crouch podcast with me, Peter Crouch. Got the notorious SID and Chris Stark with me today. The Friday edition, uh, is everyone okay? Oh, all, all very well. You? Good, good. Yeah. yeah, well, Sid's has literally just, I mean, literally flown in. Um, yeah. We weren't expecting you on the podcast today. No. Uh, for this Friday because you were, you were somewhere else. Yeah, I was in Disneyland Paris. So how, how, was, how was Paris, Sid? Like, I, I don't know, did you go on the Ratatouille ride? We did go on the Ratatouille ride. It's a storm of that, isn't it's it? It's a great ride, isn't it? Yeah, I went Mate. on that one twice. Yeah, Ratatouille ride. What was there? The uh, Is it the Hyperspace Mountain, something like that? That one. Um, the Avengers. So yeah, it was good. We were there with the kids, a few families. Very, very, uh, very fun. Pete, I've got to bring something to your attention. Um, I've got a tweet, right? It says... Have you lost the dressing room, Peter Crouch, Chris Stark? Or is this a lone move with the hope Sidwell comes back with more experience? Are we seeing FC Bullard tapping up here? And there is a picture of a smiling Steve Sidwell looking like he's just joined a, a kind of rival football podcast. And I don't know if we've ever kind of set ground rules on this pod or where, or where we're at with it. Um, but you look very happy there. Joe, you know what? It's, uh, this was disclosed. Uh, to the board was it was before, it disclosed before I made a loan uh, appearance and it was a tactical move to get uh, Jimmy Bullard uh, vice versa to come onto this podcast so. brilliant so it was an arranged can I just confirm it was an arranged swap because we are getting yes this is all above board I, I heard various people saying I've lost I've lost the office I've lost the dressing room <laughs> um, but obviously this wasn't you know, this wasn't a this is all totally above board this was, uh, yeah, Sid's, you know, enjoyed himself on a friend of ours, Jimmy Bullard's podcast, and, um, yeah, all been disclosed. Basically, it was, it was more of a loan move to get Sid some more experience. Mm. Uh, at least, for me, he's come back stronger. Yeah, I, I quite like the idea as a podcast as well. We could do a sort of German exchange, couldn't we? So one of us goes onto another podcast to, to get that person to come in. I don't know if you boys, you've never done a German exchange or a French exchange, have you? No, I didn't do it at school. No. Did you do it, Pete? Uh, I didn't, no, no. Oh, what I'd like to do, though, is uh, maybe host like the rest is politics or something like that. Uh, in, in a, like a, like a, kind of like a different, a different loan move wow. to what you'd expect. Yeah, you're on, you're right. on your own there, mate. I did a German exchange once. It's a bizarre thing, isn't it? Because you sort of, you live with another family, but you almost become part of their family. Mm. And then equally, at the German exchange I did, I, I had, um, so I went over there and I had a German mum mm -hmm. and I became part of the family and you eat dinner with the family, stuff like that. And then I don't know what happened really, but when the German came over to here, um, I got really protective of my family and just England in general. And I remember there was one incident where we went out into Trafalgar Square. Uh, I was sort of sh shown him around London. My two aunts had come with me as well. And he tried to kick one of the pigeons in Trafalgar Square. And I lost my shit. I was just like, how dare he? How dare this German come to our country kicking our pigeons, taking my mother? <laughs> like, it was, I was, I was outraged. <laughs> I look back on it. I think I was a bit over. There. I was just sort of a riled up fifteen year old. You know, I can see where you, I can see where you're going there. I sort, of, I sort of remember it was a time in my life where I had an England shirt, where it it was a, a white t shirt that said England five, Germany one, and it way. listed oh. the five Eng yeah, goal, goal scorers. Yeah. You know, obviously Heskey yeah. was there with two or three. Yeah. Was it? Was it three? Three yeah. Heskey. Um, and then under the under Germany, it just said a German. And that sort of sums me sums me up as a 15-year-old, I think. And did you wear that every day when he was there? I think I made a real point. So I just want to say, um, Andrea, my German exchange, if you are listening to this, I'd, I'd really apologise. And perhaps we could go again a few years later. Now I'm older and a tiny bit yeah. wiser. Okay.
Hey, I get that. I'd say he's pretty scarred from that experience, to be quite honest. I imagine he fancies coming over again. No yeah. wonder why the Germans hate us. <laughs> I don't think it helped things with that no, German exchange. No. And Yeah, I reckon there'll be loads of people listening that have taken part in that. Um, there is so much to talk about in this Friday podcast. Can I just kick things off, boys, with uh, David James? Have you Have oh. you both seen the clip? I feel Absolutely. like we're the podcast to talk about this, really. This is superb. It's, it's great, isn't it? Do you want it, to explain what happened, Sid? So it's at the weekend game, isn't it? It was at the, Chel- at the Liverpool-Chelsea game at Anfield. Is it at halftime mm. when the penalty kicks happened and David James makes a, an appearance as a goalkeeper? Uh, and Arrow's the, the lad. He's 10, 11 years old. Takes the penalty and J-Mo saves it. Saves the first one. And... It's a good save. It's a good penalty. <laughs> and then the, the the poor lad has an opportunity to take another one. And it's an absolute great save from J-Mo again. <laughs> he denies him again with his leg. Was he getting a bit of stick from the crowd? I J-Mo th- as well. He was, wasn't he? Was he in front of the cop? Yeah, cop it was, it was well. cop end. I think um, what I liked uh, most of all about it was uh, going on social media and not giving two shits really about it, it about the whole yeah. situation. Obviously, people have dug him out and said, you know, it's an 11-year-old. A bit like Neville Southall did when Michael Owen did his, did his show, you know. Oh, well done, Michael, he's 13. Um, obviously, the famous <laughs> quote of Neville Southall. Um, but J-Mo, yeah, as we know him, uh, friend of the pod, obviously, you know, if you've been to Crouchfest, you know J-Mo features very heavily on the, uh, you know, behind the bar. I, I guess I guess the key question here is, yes, uh, on one... On one side, he's made two saves against a child yeah. that that probably did want to score a goal and be able to take the one moment in their life to be able to say they scored it. Well, in front of the, the cop at, at Anfield. It's a rare, rare uh, yeah. I don't know, rare opportunity to be able to do that. So mm. most people would let the child score, wouldn't they? It kind of goes without saying. Of course saying. they would, yeah, but uh, not, not J-Mo. Yeah, but what Crouch is saying, and I think there's some truth in it, is... Is it right to let a child score at a stadium like that? Because you haven't really scored if you've just let it in. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And is and is it a more valid experience to score in front of the cop with a bit of, you know, and know that you've beaten a goalkeeper? Yeah, I agree. I think if it's a good penalty, then let it go. But if you can save it, is that when the ones where like it's a little dribbler and you have to sort of dive? If it's mm. a real youngster and you're diving and you know you're making their day feel great, but. I think J Mo's got every right to save both of them penalties. <laughs> <laughs> I thought J Mo looked good. Just analysing the saves, they're two good saves, aren't they? They are. They are two good saves. But the kid is eleven, and um, he has played um, at World Cups and European Championships, and of course, probably around five hundred Premier League appearances. So he probably should be saving those. Yeah. Mm. I think you're right though I think it'd be great for the kids to at some point have another chance and then when he does eventually beat David James if it is David James but or, or, or whoever is facing the cut although I'd like it to be David James every time I think that would be nice yeah. at least he knows when he does that he, he will have done something different to every other kid he's gone and done it properly mm. it's set a standard hasn't it yeah I th- well why don't we try and get some details of the uh, of the kid, let's keep some tabs on it, and then obviously we know we can organise something. Yeah, with JMO, one hundred percent found the pod. Let's get the location and let's let 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 it, let, it, let it just sink into him though. Let let it mm. just let it hurt. Let it hurt for a while, and then I he can get it, a retribution at another I, I time. I think that's a great idea, and I hope the the kid, whatever his name is, is is actually cool with it because, uh, as you say, it was a brilliant penalty. There was. He shouldn't. He shouldn't be ashamed of it at all. He's got a world class goalkeeper there who keeps himself in very good shape, and he took a good penalty in. Obviously, David James has saved it, but at least he knows next time when he scores it, mm. um, I'm sure it will happen again through public demand. That um, he'll be, he'll know that he's beat a world class goalkeeper for real. Yeah. So if you are parents of the kid or family member or something, get in touch. We'd love to, love to stay in touch, and that maybe we can make something happen. Um, have you seen about Diego Forlan this week? No. Yeah, so but so basically, what the, so Diego Forlan, obviously former Man United striker, mm-hmm. um, he's going to play in next month's Uruguayan Tennis Open. He's now playing professional tennis. Ah, oh, I did know that. Yeah, I did know that. How incredible! So is that an is that a, a qualifier or is he he's no. actually in a he's playing in really? And I did some digging on this because I saw this headline and thought that's that's bizarre, isn't it? That you can be that good in full. This was a guy who. I think was top scorer in in the 2010 World mm-hmm. Cup yeah. would have been around that time. Yeah, serious player. 
And uh, he's made the move to tennis. He's now at such a level that he's going to be competing in the Uruguayan Open, in the doubles, I think. It'd be interesting to know if he's naturally always been good at tennis or whether he's taken that up after football. Well, I did a bit of digging on this and it turns out, um, I, I think the story goes something along the lines of his sister got really ill or was in a car accident. There was some, something bad happened and uh, he was, and Diego Forlan was brilliant at tennis and then to raise money to help no his way. sister, decided that there was more money in football, was quite good at football, decided to pursue that particular path. Obviously, you know, it seems to be one of these incredible sports people that can go and, and take on something like that and had a, this amazing career in football and is now returning to the sport that he was doing brilliant at age sort of 14, 15. Didn't we That's discuss impressive. this when we went to the BMW um, the Wentworth, at Wentworth, the, the pro-am? Did we discuss this with like how good could Harry Kane have been oh. at football if he just didn't, yeah. if he wasn't so good at golf? Like it's, it's almost like as he spent too much time playing golf. Yeah, I, and it could be Diego Forlan for the brilliant player that he was could have been even better if he hadn't mucked around with tennis before. <laughs> you know, Man United have got in the way and, and, and representing his country uh, in football has got in the way of him being a, a top level uh, tennis star. Yeah, I get. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, you're right. We're selfishly looking at it from the football side, but you're right from the tennis side. This could have been the, one of the greatest tennis players yeah. the world's ever seen, but football took him. I, I think. I think. I haven't seen. I haven't seen uh, Pete whack his balls <laughs> at tennis, but I think Crouchy can have him. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, that's a game. Listen, I've seen him hit some shots. To be fair, and he, he can play, but I don't know. I let, you know. I, I think I'd get a couple of games off him. Are you that good at tennis? It's not something we've ever tested on this podcast, I don't think. Uh, I I don't play a lot, but I, I used to play a lot. Oh, God, he's got that, that modesty. That means he's, he's got the... Yeah, that's, <laughs> that modesty worries me. I don't know, I don't know. I don't know if I could take Forland, but I, I, I... Yeah, I can play. I can play. You're incredible at tennis. Thanks, babe. You are unbelievable. Thank you. There we go. There we go. I think we, if we can get hold of Diego Forlan and if he's ever in Europe, um, then let's see if we can organise something. I'd love to see that. Yeah, I, th I think we all would. Yeah, let's try and make that happen. <laughs> Add it to the list. <laughs> <laughs> all right, should we talk about the weekend just gone and scores? And I'm absolutely buzzing. Let's get into it. Obviously, I am not in the room. I'm not in the Chumba One Bar today. I'm away at the moment, but uh, mm. I'll be back stronger next week. Um but what I would say is it was a, it was a, it was a so close. Like the the, the result, um, the Liverpool result was. I had three one, Chris. You had two one, and I I was so confident that Liverpool were going to score again in that game, and I'd I'd have nicked the three points off you. But I, I got two points. Chris, you got three. It was a massive correct score. Sid, you had a diff difficult week there with with no points. Um, so that puts that puts Sid, you, you're, you're at the bottom now. Uh, Chris, you're you're in second place with 20. Uh, not so. Sid's 19. Chris 20, and me 21. So I've I've sneaked into lead. But it keeps switching round, doesn't it? It's yeah. it's very tight. This and yeah, just on that uh, Tottenham game, uh, it was a horrendous watch because by then it was clear Tottenham were going to win. You know, uh, win the game. But this this predictions thing we're doing is absolutely ruining my enjoyment of football. Mm. To be there, just willing the score to stay a certain way, or or like the Liverpool game where it was two one, and just praying that they don't get another goal. They'd already won. Do you know what I mean? Just praying that they don't get another goal. It's just horrible. Mm. I I had this. I was I so the, the West Ham. The Tottenham West Ham game was one or at half time. I left at half time to go to watch my son play, uh, which was about an hour away. So I'm in the car listening to the radio. I don't know if you listen to results coming in yeah. on the radio. It's the most frustrating thing. Or when they go live to a game. When Spurs scored the second, I went crazy. And when they scored the, the third and the fourth, I still went crazy. If people would have been looking at me from outside my car, they would have, they would have said, said, he's having a massive row with someone on the phone. <laughs> Honestly, I was fuming when it went. I thought well, I left at one one. I thought, oh, that this is because it was a good first half. Crouchy, was you? Was you at the game? I was at you the was game, there. mate. Yeah, I was there. Yeah, it was a great game. It was, and like 
I thought West Ham contributed in the first half and then they completely fell apart second half. But I was buzzing because I, yeah. I knew you boys had the draw. So even when it was 3-1 and 4-1, obviously I wasn't getting the three-pointer, but I was comfortable with my one-point lead. And that actually put me in yeah, the lead, that, actually. That was a mistake. Mate, that was a mistake. So uh, after we recorded this Friday podcast, I came away from it and was like, oh, I've, I've done this wrong. So I, I obviously look at what everyone's DM'd me in terms of predictions. I'd, I, the, what I'd written down in my phone was 3-1 mm. Tottenham. And, and I'd accidentally said on the podcast to all, and I came away from it going, oh, it's too late to change it. So then I'm watching this game going, oh, God, I hope it's a draw. I must have just copied what you were saying, Sid, or like whatever it was in the moment. And then for a period of time, I was concerned it was going to be 3-1 in the actual game. And if that score had come through and I missed out on three points. So I've thrown away a point today. Basically, the lesson is we've got to concentrate with these, mm. with these scores, you know. We've got to concentrate. So I, I was watching you in the pub, Crouchy. Um, I had you on the screen and I had Watford Luton Derby match on, on, on my phone. And just everything was going against me. And mm. it was only like one o'clock in the afternoon, early mm. kickoffs. Yeah, just talking about that one quickly, that reminded me of something that Watford put a post out of, of high shithousery. Yeah, top shithousery. Did we see this? In, enjoying the, enjoy, taking in the views? Enjoying it? the sights. Enjoying the sights of, of the local area of Luton. They put up a video just showing <laughs> Luton, basically, like, you know. <laughs> but they, it was the worst you could ever imagine like when it was shit out of the highest order I thought it was great but the score what happened to the score they, Luton won didn't they yeah, they won 3-0 yeah, yeah so it backfired a little bit <laughs> they won right they won right and then put clipped up the goals and tweeted uh, in, enjoying the sights oh. <laughs> that is always the danger before a game mm. I always remember I remember like when I was at Liverpool that one of the mottos was like, never talk, never talk before the game. Talk like you can speak after. Oh, yeah. On the last podcast, we talked about Timo Werner, didn't we? And we kind of fully endorsed him with the idea of him having a massive mm -hmm. chumba wumba. Yeah. Because when this podcast gets behind people, uh, it, it leads to success in quite bizarre ways. It's happened with a few different uh, sports people. What was the upshot with Timo Werner there? Something didn't quite connect, did it? Uh, no, unfortunately, he was on the bench. Uh, I was at the game, and then I was thinking, we've given the big seller, and he didn't, he didn't play. Son was fit, he didn't play. He came off the bench, and I was willing him to score. But I'll be honest with you, he didn't get very, he didn't get very close to it. Um, he, he, he looks like a player uh, struggling for confidence big time. Like, I, I feel for him at the moment. Um, he needs to go bad. Yeah, I, I don't know whether... Uh... Like I think, yeah. We went, let's not dwell on it too much. I think we mentioned it last week. He's yeah. he's a player that frustrates, but gets in positions. Can he get on a scoring run? I'm not sure, but let's uh, listen. If you want to stick by him, we'll, we'll 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 give it another week. Well, let's see. Let's see if um, he does chumba wumba in mm. this situation. Um, obviously, the Arsenal game as well. A couple of things to talk about there. There's another red card, of course. Uh, what were your thoughts on this? Yeah, I thought it was a red card. I thought it was, um, he got put through and he pulled him back and it's a red card. Terrible back pass. Trossard. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you say, you say that it, you potentially don't think it was a red card, Chris, because that, uh, it was, uh, it was nailed on red card for me. No, uh, no, no. I guess where, from where, when I first saw it, um, my first thought was, is there a way another player, understanding the rules as I understand it, which probably isn't that great. Um, w would another player, I can't remember who it was, been able to get across mm. in time to mean that that challenge wasn't necessarily the last man mm. in denying a goal scoring yeah. opportunity? It's a long way out, isn't and, it? And, and I think the other side of it was the fact that the goalkeeper was retreating rather than coming to the ball ruled out any idea that the goalkeeper was going to mm. get anywhere near it in the first yeah. place, even if they were fucking rapid. Yeah. Um, so, no, I think on balance it, it seemed fair. You'll be careful. You'll have the Arsenal. You'll have the Arsenal fans on you. you <laughs> what being too negative? If you carry on, <laughs> if you carry on, like, it is a cause for concern. These amount of red cards that Arsenal are getting. If they want to have their top side out week in week, uh, top players in selection for selection week in week out, and challenge for the title, they you know Saliba's could be a big miss this weekend. Yeah, could, could be, be massive. Big, could be massive. Yeah, he certainly will be. Should we get into the games? Yeah, let's do yeah, it. Yeah, let's do it. 
This next part of the podcast is supported by Paddy Power. It's the big weekend fixture. It's Arsenal versus Liverpool. This is a cracker, by the way. Uh, Arsenal are favourites. Uh, they're 11 to 10. So 10 against you, £21. Liverpool are uh, 23 to 10. So 10 against you, 33. So Arsenal pretty strong favourites, really. Um, I don't know what you think of that. Uh, like, they should be, I suppose, considering on, on recent... You know, history, like last season, for instance, and the season before, but um, form-wise, you think think that? Mm. It's tricky, as you say, Sid, before, you know, there's been a number of red cards. They, they've been playing with 10 men and generally speaking, managing to sort of scrape results. Yeah. Um, even with City, it, it felt like a result, all things considered, you know, coming away with a, a draw. Yeah. yeah. Um. I don't know though. I, I don't know. I feel that without wanting to to rile Arsenal fans into thinking we've been too negative about it, it does feel that it's unraveled a tad there. I think this could that they just come off the back of a defeat against Bournemouth, yeah? They can't afford to lose this. They can't afford to lose two in a row against a rival team that's going for the title that would put them a good few points behind them and I don't see that many I see points being dropped this season through draws not losses so you need to then win against proper title contenders which Liverpool are they're a well-oiled machine uh, going really well this season Uh, really good result against Chelsea last week and I don't think Arsenal can afford to lose this I really really don't what are you going to go for predictions what are you thinking uh, there has been draws in this game, right? So two of the last three meetings in the Premier have been draws. Um, obviously, they're, they're both battling out for the title. Um, they, <laughs> I think it might be cagey. I think, you know, both defences, like, I, I know they're missing Saliba, Calafuri, Arsenal, so they have got a few injury doubts. So Liverpool could nick it. I'm leaning towards a draw, but I'm going to back Liverpool to win 2-1. This is great. Mm. So you're going against the odds there as they currently stand. Yeah. How about you, Sid? Um, well, I've actually left a voice note to uh, to Ross our produ- in production because uh, I thought I wasn't going to make this. Um, so he's actually got my prediction, but I might change it. Uh, we'll change it. You can just say, say what you want now. Yeah. I obviously fired blanks last week. <laughs> so um, I've, take, I've taken the bluey and I'm up for the resurrection. Um <laughs> So, uh, <laughs> of okay. Sorry about the pun. So I need I need a big week. I need I need some points. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna please the Arsenal fans here. Um, not for a win. I'm gonna say a draw. I'm gonna say one one. I think it's gonna be cagey. I think it's gonna be one one. A one one draw. Do you yeah. think that's okay, gonna I, get I, you out of Sid? Do you think that's gonna get you out of the? Uh... The grief you're getting off the Arsenal fans, from quite a few of them saying you're negative towards Arsenal, you know, even though you know. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I, I I see what you're saying, right? And obviously, we mentioned this last week. I don't think I am negative to Arsenal fans. Okay, it's just <laughs> Chris laughing. The the predictions that we get is obviously always it's either Arsenal, Man City, Arsenal, United, whoever it is, and I just think the other team are going to be Arsenal on that day. So when that become uh, apparent last week that you were brought to my attention. I I, 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 I out with a few. I said, look, bring it. Um, and no one has. Not, no, not one message to No one's DMs. DM'd me and and come for me and said, oi, notorious. I, I I've have had one. one that come on Twitter um, that was addressed to all of us. Did and you it, get the one that was for bonfire bollocks? Yeah. That one. So even that Wally, he... Um, <laughs> He 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 th- he thinks I'm a uh, a pro- product from the Howland Academy. See, I was way before then. I was I was at London Colney, so he must be a, another plastic Arsenal fan that's just jumped on the bandwagon. Oh, fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> but but you're right. You did call it out, and no one no I, one. Honestly, no you one could go through DMs. my phone, and there's you can go through all my DMs. There's not one that's come for me on the on DMs. Oh, so you're not negative Has, they, about uh, Arsenal? Are you just you're just trying to win. Uh, you know, and, and I think exactly. you, you've called a draw here. You know, Arsenal, Liverpool are in good form. It's a, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's it'd, be, it'd be interesting. Obviously, these these messages Crouch are going to 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 Chris. So it'd be interesting to see if any of 
more have come to you. To, yeah, to I did. Buy there me. are a couple. I, it's annoying. I can't find. I haven't had loads, but there was a couple that came in. There was one um, that that was sort of saying um, something about your negativity, and then uh, and then saying they were going to DM you, but ultimately no one does. No. So you know, if anyone's got an issue, I guess you just DM Sids and. <laughs> But, but I don't. I don't think anyone genuinely does. If you have, if they have got issues, right, and they are holding, you know, they res, reserved about messaging Sids. Would you call them an old-fashioned shit house rather than the the new sense of the word? Yeah, I guess so. I guess they're kind of using it in the in the way that it, it, it used to be said. Mm, but um, yeah, potentially. New. I think they're just new woke idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, he's going in. <laughs> he's going in. Oh Jesus. <laughs> It's not long to bonfire evening, is it? Should we do a special, like, as just a special podcast for bonfire night on like and like instead of having the guy, maybe we could just get a set of set of balls on the top of the bonfire. Yeah, or decorate your front door with just some hanging, like hanging balls, like, like the new, Is it hot or is it just me? <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay, yeah. Let's see that if we can get that. Trending up and down the country, that'd be great. Yeah, a real bonfire <laughs> evening, that'd be great. Because no, well, no one's totally sure on the Guy Fawkes origin story. It'd be no. great if in a hundred years' time, they forget that one and think it was about you. No one. <laughs> Every chance with this one. Uh, so, st- prediction. Sorry, you. we've gone off piece here. Uh, me and Pete have done ours. What, yeah, what are you going for? Uh, so, obviously, as I always do, I put it on Instagram and just say, look, s- help me out. Send mm-hmm. in your predictions. Power to the people. And thank you to everyone who's done that because I'm keeping up with the lads so far. And, and these guys are the football experts. Um, I'm going to go for, and what most people seem to be saying to me, Arsenal 2, Liverpool 2. Oh. I'm going for a draw as well. Oh, okay. Just a couple more goals. Mm. Yeah. I would I no one back in Arsenal though, interesting. That's what I originally went that's what I originally wanted to go for 2-2, two, two, but I've uh, I thought I don't like going for the draw cuz quite often like when you two went for the draw last time and I I went for the win it, it came in and I, so I'm going to I'm going to go all out for the winner. Yeah, the only thing I would say with the draw in this game is I, I guess you've got two teams at the top and I don't know, just very quickly, boys, when, you, when you're playing a, a sort of team that's in a rival situation in the league, is there an element of sometimes playing out a draw and, and kind of moving it on to the next games? Is, is, is it a kind of different mentality? I, I think it's a different mentality on this one, knowing, like I said before, I think Arsenal have got to go into this knowing that they can't lose. So if you go into knowing that you can't lose and it starts getting towards the end of the game, I still think they're going to go for the win, but they'll also be really cautious in defence knowing a draw is better than a defeat. Right, remember lads, we've also got the Paddy's Boost. Uh, we each pick a leg of a Crouch Pod bet builder. Uh, the odds on that bet builder will they'll be boosted by 20% and put on the special section of the website or app. Um, I'm going to go straight in, player to be carded, Gabriel. All right, cool. I'm going to go player to score or assist. Um, um, what's wrong this one? Yeah, I'll go Diaz. Why not? Okay, uh, a player to commit one or more fouls. I'm going to go with uh, Robertson for Liverpool. Uh, I think it could be a uh, tricky afternoon for him. Okay, all good. Uh, the odds are correct at the time of recording. Uh, please gamble responsibly. Nice. Okay, next game. Right, well, next game is Everton versus Fulham. Uh, Everton have been on an upward trajectory since it was an awful start to the season. Do you feel they'll carry that on against Fulham? <sighs> Joe, you know what they've they're unbeaten in the last four Everton. Uh, Are they? Yeah, unbeaten in the last four Premier League games: two wins, two draws. Mm. Um, Fulham, off the back of a three-one defeat to Villa. Um, this is at Goodison as well. It does feel like Everton are kind of turning a bit of a corner. You're right, correct. They had a dreadful start to the season. Mm. Um, I think this is going to be a really close game. Yeah, um, the reaction to Marco Silva should be interesting as well. Yeah, I'm sure that will be uh, add to the kind of quite feral atmosphere mm. that I, I expect. Yeah, a little bit inconsistent Fulham, haven't they? They've had they've had good yeah. wins against Newcastle. Forest was was a decent win as well, um, but then lost. They've lost the last two, so it's difficult to know which Fulham mm. will turn up. But I do like I do like Fulham. I do think they look good. I think they'll be fine. Yeah, but when you say that they'll be fine, is it, would you say then that you would expect them to beat Everton at this point? No, I wouldn't say It feels say like that. Everton on a slight uplift and Fulham uh, sort of to, to, to be safe and to be sound should be looking to beat an, an Everton side like this. I believe so, yeah. I think uh, Dwight McNeil's a player I really like and I think um, 
I think he's been instrumental, really, in the upturn for, for Everton. Um, I played with him at Burnley and I said to everyone, what a fantastic player I thought he was. He is a, he's a top player and he, with a wonderful left foot and um, he was really impressive in training. I, think, I feel like he's really showing that now. Um, I'm sure Everton fans will, will, will agree with that, but um, you know, people that don't watch him every week, um, it maybe, maybe wouldn't, wouldn't have an idea really of how good he was, but I, I love him as a player. What All right mean? then, um, where are you going with this one? Uh, do you want to go first? Yeah, go on then. So I'm gonna I'm gonna back Fulham in this. I think um, I think I read is this, is this right? Fulham are unbeaten in their previous six games against Everton. Feels to me that um, there's still a kind of expectation that Fulham should win this game. It does concern me that Everton's form is is clearly better than I even realised, mm. and that probably is sneaking up on a lot of people with their predictions. But I'm going to back Fulham. Um, most people seem to be suggesting a Fulham win on my Insta DMs. So I'm going to go Fulham 2, Everton 1. Oh, Crouchy, what are you going to go for? I'll go last on this. Okay, I, um, I'm, going to, I'm going to stick with Sean Dyche and, and Everton this time. I feel like they're at home. I feel like they'll just sneak this. I'm going to go for Everton 1-0. See, I was thinking that. Were you? I was thinking that, but I hate doing the nil because if that team scores, you know what follows. That's not like um, that. I'm going to go with a... I'm going to go with my former team. I'm going to go with a Fulham away win. I'm going to go for a one nil, And I'm going against the grain here because I do like the other team to score. Uh, but Fulham one nil. All right, let's get straight into Brighton versus Wolves. Uh Brighton look good, I have to say. Wolves are still winless. Awful start to the season. Uh, bottom of the table after eight games. Um, obviously facing Brighton, who are flying. Uh, they're in European places this season. Uh, Wolves winless in the previous six, losing the last five in all competitions. I'm not sure what's going on there, because I, mm. I like Gary O'Neill and, and I'm a big fan of his work. Um, I think they've been in luck, unlucky in some of the games. Uh, some decisions going against them as well. It's just not going for them at all, but uh, you need to win big time. And uh, Brighton, the exact opposite at the moment. Um, they look impressive. Yeah, Brighton unbeaten at home as well. It's turning into a bit of a kind of fortress mm -hmm. there. Um, obviously, we've talked about them quite a lot on this podcast, the success they've had uh, in sort of this this first part of the the season. So for me, it feels a bit hard to kind of see past that. Uh, it seems to be that most people are agreeing with me there. Yeah. It's just how many goals, potentially. Well, I'll go dive straight in. Short and sweet. Brighton three, Wolves one. Oh, I've got that. Zibash. Yeah, I've got exactly the same score. And I know that's not the most sporting thing, but everyone's going 3-1, 3-1, 3-1. And it would hurt me so badly if I change my score now and Sid gets 3-1. I can't accept it. So I'm going to have to go Brighton three, Wolves one. All right, I'm going to go. I'm going to go Brighton two, Wolves nil. All Brighton then. All Brighton. It looks all like all Brighton. Okay. Mark. Mark. We've got Mark. Mark all, we've got Brighton. Mark. All Brighton. <laughs> they haven't. Wolves haven't won a single point at home. It's incredible, isn't it? Tough run of fixtures for them, but not a single point at home. Mm. Is that right? Blimey. Nightmare scenario at the moment for them. Uh, okay then, so I feel like this weekend's football was a massive chumbawamba for me. Uh, you boys were asking question marks of the nation and uh, everyone who listens to this podcast and the scores that they were giving me, but they kind of proven themselves mm. yet again. It was only that international break that that did me uh, did me over, but no one knows what they're doing with that uh, predictions-wise, literally no one. So uh, so to be able to chumbawamba this weekend, I'm hoping that the scores this weekend coming up are just going to throw me well ahead of you boys. Well, I don't. I need it to be close, tight, uh, and hopefully I can chumba wumba mm. uh, after a disappointing last weekend. So we'll see. Squeaky bum time, lads. Squeaky bum time. Um, all right, lads, mm. should we get some messages? We've got one here from Dan. Hi, Crouchy, Sid, and Barbecue C. Me and the lads have a golf day organised and need to think of a suitable forfeit. We're playing a two-ball scramble and would love it if you or the listeners could suggest some forfeits for the losing pair. Anything you can suggest would be great and we will share videos slash photos of the forfeit that can entertain Steve Sidwell. Love the pod. Thanks, Dan. 
Okay, four fits on the golf course. You've got to be careful with this one because we don't want to get them banned. Mm. <laughs> All right. I think um, I think they should have to follow suit with our forfeits. So you can choose. We've had two forfeits on this podcast so far. Um, you either dress as a cheerleader and, you know, do that for the rest of your golf trip. Mm-hmm. Probably not as good. Or you do the life drawing that Sid's did and, and the losing pair have to, you know, become the, the sort of the models for the life drawing. I think just copy our forfeits is probably the best way to yeah, go on this. Yeah, that's nice. I like that. Yeah. Okay. And then we can hang the art in the Chumba One bar. I like that a lot. It's classy. Yeah. Right, here we go. I've got a, uh, yeah, I've got some shirts here, guys. Um, hello, Crouchy, BBQC and Bonfire. Uh, can I get your thoughts on this absolute shit show of a shirt combination? Uh, these two ended up being in the seats in front of me and I can confirm they held hands throughout the full 90 minutes. Not for me, this. He's not happy <laughs> at all. Um, it's an Arsenal shirt. It's two Arsenal shirts. It's a man and wife. And the reason I know it's a man and wife is because um, he's got just and she's got married on, on the shirt. And he's got number 20 and she's got 24. So it's just married, 2024. 20, um, they're in, obviously, he's staying on the left hand side and she's on the right. Um, I, I don't know what to make of this either. I'm not, I'm not pleased with this. This does not please me. Uh, how do you feel? Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, Pete. I think leave this at home. <laughs> <laughs> leave this at home. You leave this muck at home because each to their own and that's great. Take your missus to football. Really, really good. But leave that out at home. I think the problem they have is they do have to walk around holding hands because if they get separated at any point, you've got a fella with just 20 on the back, which... <laughs> <laughs> So it sort of makes it sound like he's barely legal or something. <laughs> and on the other one, you've got married 24, which suggests, you know, she's, she's mm. got a history of quite some length. Mm. And I just think, um, so I see why they have to come as a double act. I think these double shirts, I think is a trend that you've really got to avoid because the individual messages can be, yeah, you know, misconstrued. It's just not acceptable, is it? You know, they seem they seem happy. <laughs> well, uh, I think he's, he's, he's described absolutely superbly uh, in the caption where it says, can I get your thoughts on this absolute shit show of a shirt combo? If she stands on the other side of him, it looks like them they got married, but only just. <laughs> 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 Which, you know... <laughs> Always send in your shirts. Peter.crouch at acast.com. Now, Sids, the Hand of Pod is launched. Yes, the Hand of Pod uh, was launched last weekend. Uh, in various locations in and around London, we do believe. Um, I don't believe we've had any update yet of any whereabouts where they've been collected or taken or even passed on or passed over. So, um, so I don't know if people are aware of this. Go back on our socials. There's various posts, various clues of where this will be. Uh, if you do find it, take it on your adventures, pass the pod, um, pass the hand, uh, the hand of pod, and give us updates, and make sure you tag in hashtag hand of pod. Yeah, exactly that. And if you haven't done this yet, make sure you're following us on socials, because all the information's on there, and it tells you what to do. But <laughs> it's as Sid said, if you're new to this podcast, there's these hands that we've got in various locations, these kind of like rubber prosthetic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, you've got to find them, and then do with them what you will, but make sure you take pictures, hashtag hand of pod. I think that's all the podcast business for this Friday's podcast, Pete. Yeah, I think it is, mate. Yeah, and um, and I'll be back stronger next week. Uh, obviously, apologies for being away this time, lads. Uh, Sid, you did really well to to get back on the on the, on the Eurostar there. Um, unfortunately, I haven't quite made it back, but I will be back back stronger uh, next week very soon. Uh, good luck with your predictions, boys. Um, and Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba. Chumbawamba.